With Change Your Voice, Change Your Life, I'm Mort Cooper, your host, and I have John Curtis, a PhD. He's a bright young uh, lad, and he uh, likes to join with me. He thinks it's pejorative, that's a put down, to appear the way we appeared. Uh, I don't. I think it's uh, very entertaining to show that uh, we can kid around and have a good time. This is the last show we're going to do because uh, uh, this network, uh, Public Access, is going uh, Betty by. Uh, John? Uh, Don't you find that ironic that Public Access would be going down the, you know, down the drain that they wouldn't fund that? Because that's the only thing that keeps the public, it keeps these politicians um, legit. I mean, where else can people John, speak the world out? Is, the world is going down. What is the title that you came this up is with? And John, well, the director. The other John. Uh, yeah. We credit him with the other John, fra- the director. fraud in your throat. Fraud, fraud in your throat. Like uh, frog in your throat. Yes. But fraud. But I love fraud in your throat. The whole society is into fraud. Our society is falling apart. It is, it is cratering financially, vocally, I'm the only doctor in the world, I'm sorry to uh, tell you this, uh, that is reporting cures ongoing for 35 years. I was just up at UC San Francisco on October 18th, 2008, and the title was 35 Years of Curing Spasmodic Dysphonia, the strand. You can't talk like that. And the medical profession worldwide, academia, my field, Asher, uh, says it. Uh, Allegan, the maker of Botox, says, and they guarantee there are no cures of the condition. I've been reporting cures of the strangled voice for over 35 years. Now, w- w- the title, I think, is very interesting. Well, what Fraud I in your throat. D- These people are talking with a, a bad voice. They're, they're self-fraudulent. And the society, who's this gentleman? Uh, he's a very well-intentioned uh, guy, uh, Bernie L. Madoff. Ber- Bernie Madoff. Now, here's a guy that is out there, and he's been around for years, and hedge funds have put their money with him, and he's got a great reputation. He was offering an annual return of around 10% when everybody else is getting 1% or 2%. Mm-hmm. And he had a lot of investors who wanted that 10%. Now, he only, it said he's only front page New York Times, LA Times, Wall Street. He only lost $50 billion of investors' money. But that's nothing. Don't you have a sense of joie de vivre? Look at the federal government. Look what, uh, what is the fellow's name? Henry Paulson. He's the the Treasury Secretary. Well, he's handing out money like it's going out of style. Well, why don't you get in line for it? You're you're entitled. Maybe you need a bailout. Folks, I tried for a bailout, (laughs) but they don't give handouts to lower echelon people. Now, guys like you probably can write up a great, great grant. Now, here's proposal. the here's here's the problem with you know the the scenario right now. They're going to shut off public access, uh-huh. and you think about that out there, public. These are shows that are uncensored. Mm-hmm. These are shows that don't have some minders. They who will are never saying get on what national is, television. What it is that you say in this show mm-hmm. would be at your national association, you think about this, and the California Association of (laughs) Speech and Hearing It would be uh, heresy, heresy. They would not permit this honest, frank, open discussion, would they? Because hypocrisy prevails. The word But then what happens when public assets shuts down? They're saying there are no cures. Uh, I, I have appeared in the American Speech Language Hearing Association four times reporting cures. 
in this association since 1974. In the California Speech Hearing Association, I believe it dates back to 1971, and they banned my ads in uh, my association and in the California Speech Hearing Association. Well, they said your ads were unacceptable. No, they didn't say it's unacceptable. Uh, it's inappropriate for the members of Casher. No, no, no. They're saying, Asher is saying through its advertising that I guarantee cures. Well, you've never guaranteed cures. No, I, of course not. Why would they say that you've done that if you haven't done it? But they put that in writing, so I but put it in the book. And the book is out there. Uh, it, it, it's called Curing Hopeless Voices. You don't have to spend a sentence on but my website. Can you just say, can we say for the record on right. this show, shame on you <laughs> at the city council for not putting your foot down mm. to a publicly traded corporation to maintain that people who use these cables mm. right now have some sp space for shows like this to inform the people about things that a major pharmaceutical company or a medical profession or your speech pathology profession premier, would not allow you to talk about. They've right. banned you. Yes. And why have they banned you? Because you developed a cure for a condition that steps on the toes of a major pharmaceutical company. It steps on the toes of academia. It steps on the toes of the association I'm in, both California Speech yeah. and Hearing Association, American Speech Language Hearing Association. The beginning, uh, I feel my, my compatriot here, uh, John Curtis, was a little uncomfortable. I'm not. Because <laughs> that's the sound of people who have the strangled voice, folks. I have a two-hour DVD. I'll give you a deal that you can't turn down. The book, uh, the DVD is very expensive. You have the condition, you can get the two-hour DVD free. Just come to the office, I'll give you the DVD. It shows the before and after cures. Why are the before and after cures, uh, we've talked about this to right. others in your field, unacceptable? Why is it that when you... Because it, the, the Botox company, Allegan, I don't believe loves all natural cures. What I'm doing is called direct voice rehab, folks, and it's all natural. Do you use drugs in your approach? No, I don't use drugs. Do you urge them for toward surgery? Do you recommend that for no, them? No, that's draconic. What, uh, do, what do you do None of them? these approaches have ever reported a single cure of the strangled voice. I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. I'm the only doctor in the world reporting cures of this so-called hopeless and curable condition. And I've been curing patients with this condition, no guarantees of a cure, implied or other, for over 35 years. I figured it out. Did you know that, um, um, you know, the bumper music we we're, were, were using? Yeah, I love the, I love the, the, okay. the words. The, what are the words? We don't want your education. No, I don't because either. Because your profession has educated people now to believe there are no cures for spasmodic dysphonia. Right. And we don't want your thought control. Now, you think about this. Yes. Why have they prevented you from speaking in behalf of a cure that you discovered 40 years ago mm -hmm. for spasmodic dysphonia? And you discovered it inadvertently with serendipitous cure. Yes, that's correct. Why? But that's how discoveries come up. Isn't it possible that the people out there in TV land who would mm. ordinarily watch the show mm. will no longer have the opportunity to hear the truth. From one doctor that's censored and banned, that is correct. So nobody told me they were having a hearing on the continuation or discontinuation about these uh, public access cables. Uh, I only knew about it. I only knew about the me uh, the meeting, reading it in the L.A. Times the day after the, the hearing. I think the the bottom line is for these companies right now, is that they just don't want to fork over the money. It hurts their earnings. Oh, what, did I, what what else could it be? Does anybody have any idea why else would they cancel these shows? This is only does good <laughs> for the public, right? Twenty five years I've been on. Okay, so you know that you've been. Do I use it as a promotional to get referrals? You have. No. No. Isn't it true that the reason why you've done these shows, mm -hmm. there's no other reason, mm -hmm. we don't know what the motives or other people are, mm -hmm. but we know what yours have been, mm -hmm. is to disseminate mm -hmm. unvarnished information about cures of spasmodic dysphonia. To let them know there's choice. It's out there. The there medics don't give them choice. No. The academicians, my field, on its official website, ignores cures. And yet I presented cures four different times at the association I'm in, and at the California Speech and Hearing Association. I find it entertaining, if I may tell you, that 
If you read the book, you'll find out the nitty-gritty on what grounds they banned me running ads in their various publications. Okay. They're, they're so frivolous, it, it's more than a, a funny story. It's a farce. They've banned you. Okay, mm -hmm. now they've banned the messenger service that enables you to get the word out. Yes. Do you have any thoughts or st uh, any uh, ideas of what the powers to be, why they should not be banning public access? I think they're making a mistake because there's a percentage of people who do bring enlightenment and a uh, uh, fair play. <coughs> fair play. But for one reason or another, um, it doesn't matter. Fraud in your throat. Look at br instead br of a fraud. Do you know that Madoff? There, there's a thing called a uh, affinity. Have you heard of that before? No. Okay. Madoff used the fact that he was Jewish mm -hmm. and his contacts with Jewish charitable organizations mm -hmm. to invite them to invest with him. He was returning 10% on an mm -hmm. annual basis. Now, what happened is a lot of people started to pull out of mutual funds. Mm -hmm. right? Recently. Well, I mean, since the market started crashing. Yes, recently. Yeah. And but as Madoff a consequence, they asked him. For years. Yes, they asked him for the cash. They mm -hmm. wanted to liquidate their investments. Yes. And he said, there's no cash. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with that? And it's Madoff, only fifty billion. He said. Do you know what Madoff? Do you know that he's free on a bond mm -hmm. right now? Mm -hmm. Do you know how much money he posted for himself? They had him post a bond of ten million dollars. Do you know that that's only one million dollars cash to him? He's mm -hmm. a billionaire. Do you know that's a drop in the bucket? Why shouldn't a man who has been able to <laughs> run a fund, a hedge whatever, fund, whatever it is? and lose 50 billion. Why are you finding fault with the man? I don't understand why you're critical. Why are the newspapers all in a frenzy? Folks, it's only 50 billion. We've just, the, the government is just funding everything now. They're dropping money out of the, the sky for the, the top people that created the problem to begin with. Yes, What's wrong yes, with that? And they're all getting their money back. They're, they're all get, getting bonuses. What's wrong with that? Yeah. Uh, Dr. Curtis, why do you find fault look, with Look, this them? is no different than, uh, do you remember the book Candide? Of course. Okay, this is Dr. Penglos. And tell them who Dr. Penglos was. This is, the, this is the protagonist in the story, and he's going around, and he says, is this the best of all possible worlds? Is this not the best? And it, is this right not the best? Right in back of Dr. Penglos, was, which was a takeoff on a philosopher named Leibniz, uh, a whole background of dismembered bodies, and he called the speaker Dr. Penglos, so it comes down through history. Uh, it's hilarious. Uh, Henry Paulson says this is the best way to give money out. Uh, one approach fails, another approach fails. Uh, we have Benaki who's dropping money th out of the sky. He's making money. They're making money. Yeah, they're, no, he's they're, not they're making it. He's He's, he's printing money he's printing at the money. Office of Printing and Engraving. So we have a chance to get hyperinflation. They got Paul Volcker in there now. He was the guy that curbed hyperinflation over 20 plus years ago. He's also so they're the getting guy ready to have hyperinflation. He's also the guy, by the way, Volcker, who sent the country into a horrendous depression, a recession mm -hmm. that lasted for years. Well, that took care of the, the hyperinflation. Well, that's what he wants to do this time around. No, this time again. we're not in hyperinflation right now. No, but I mean, if we, we're follow, going Vol if money. we follow Volcker's advice, this country right now, I mean, for Obama to be using an 80 year old, an octogenarian mm -hmm. who's a complete has been mm -hmm. with respect to his knowledge of the economy and what makes this well, you're country a, tick you're right against, now. You're a pejorative. But we need to pejorative. get money He's flowing. down on a guy who's 81 years of age. And I'm approaching that age, and he's very critical of me when I tell him to watch where he's driving, he's going to hit a car. <laughs> what could I tell you? Look, I, w we have a situation where you're not going to be able to disseminate this information anymore, and this is very valuable. Does there's, it make there's a people difference out there who, in our society? There's people out there who cannot talk right now. They cannot speak. They've lost they have, their profession. It's rumored to be a high suicide rate. Why do it's you care? It's not just rumored. It's true. Yeah, but why do you care? Why? High depression, high how suicide. Do you, how do you know that? Because we've heard it from the patients directly. Yeah, but why are you concerned? They've come in here and they've yeah. talked to them. Right. Why are you concerned with people's health and welfare? You're, you're, if I may say so, and I'm saying it very kindly, he's a sick person 
Who cares about the welfare of somebody else? Everybody is out there for themselves. That's what it is. We just had eight years of, of administration that deregulated everything under the sun. But before then, the same deregulation was going on. Well, Why are we opposed to the hedge funds making a good living four or five billion dollars a year or 245 millions or 450? Why are you so trillions. down on people who are entrepreneurs and trying to get ahead and li live the American dream. Well, that's the same as your company, Allergan. They've made billions off this drug called Botox. It's one of the deadliest poisons on the face of the earth. But not in attenuated form. They say it's safe and effective. No, it's, it's, in it's, the deadly, short it's, run, it's even deadly as in an attenuated form because we've seen patients. We've had them on this show. Uh -huh. We've talked to them. I spoke with a Kennedy uh -huh. uh, directly and told him that there's another approach. Robert Kennedy. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Junior. has spasmodic dysfunction. Now, he has a bright light. He's an environmental attorney. Yes, and he knows what poison and substances and he's, from he's the air And he's putting can do. into his own body one of the deadliest toxins known to man and thinking that it's a, pure, a natural purified protein, a type of health food. Are you going to try to change the mind of people such as Robert Kennedy or Diane Rehm, who's on Lifetime Botox? Look, his cousin is now slated potentially to receive the Senate seat. Uh, that would be an appointment by uh, Patterson of New York, the one who replaced Elliot Spitzer. Mm -hmm. Now, think about this. Spitzer, they condemned him for soliciting a prostitute and kicked him out of office. Mm -hmm. But the governor of Illinois right now, Blagojevich, who is basically selling like a banana republic, <laughs> a Senate seat to the highest bidder out there on the auction block, he's sitting in his office still. But mm -hmm. the guy that solicits a prostitute, now what is it with sex in this country? Is we're, sex such a horrible thing? We're very puritanical. I don't care you, what... You, you I used don't to live in Germany. As long as you don't hurt anybody, what you're doing... Do you think it's right that the, a politician is evicted from office because they solicit a prostitute? Well, there are other issues I don't believe that's uh, sensible and meaningful. In Europe, you can have sex. <laughs> and the French have sex. They ha carry their mit uh, have their mistresses with them and their wives. Uh, I had served in the service. I volunteered for the army, and I was stationed in the Pentagon, and then went overseas. FBI cleared, and I served in a uh, position there. But uh, you were a code specialist, weren't you? Yeah, high, uh, 1776. I, I'm very good at taking code. Uh, very accurate. But I mean, you had a, sec a top security clearance, and you yep. saw what was going on. And there was prostitution in Germany at the time that you were there. The prostitute, of course. It there was, was all, prostitution. It was rampant. It was all over That's the world. That's what dial. I'm talking about. Yes. Do you think that the politicians resigned in Germany because Nobody they solicited... Nobody resigned. That, that was, it was just in. It no, was uh, seriously. If there was a politician who solicited a prostitute and somebody in the press reported it, would that warrant a termination of the person's career and life? It, it warrants laughter. <laughs> not, it not, wouldn't mean it, anything over not, there, would no, it? No, no. Uh, look, sex, if you forgive me, was free. Uh, you didn't need to pay a woman uh, to go to bed with her. It That's was so pre The state in Germany was paying women to have children, not out of wedlock, uh, out of wedlock, so they get a disability and lifetime pension yeah. if they produce uh, children for the state. Look, there were so many German uh, soldatens, legless and armless, and killed. The state needed to replenish its population, man population. Right. So it was honorable for the women to have children. Yeah. But look, uh, getting back to the, the situation about public access going mm -hmm. down, shutting the door mm -hmm. on information, we're living in an Orwellian world today in which information is predigested and people are programmed to believe a lot of it's lies. Fraud in the throat. It's fraud in the throat. And what I'm wondering when you for hear you somebody is, talk, my take, hypocrisy ru is ruling. It's, to me, I, a joke. I don't watch much television. I am, w may watch a show or two, uh, Bill Moyer. I may watch 60 Minutes now and then. Yeah. I stopped watching a while back because they were running frivolous stories. They're now back on serious stuff. I propose they do a story on what I do, cures. I never hear from anybody there. Well, what about Mary Hannon from ABC? Yeah, that's ABC Medical Mysteries. And she was, she was going to report fully on, on your cures of spasmodic dystonia. Well, uh, she referred, they never allowed that on the show. And she, after the show was over, she refers 
of the uh, people with SD to the National Spasmodic Dysphonic Association, which is basically funded by the company Allegan. That's like referring a, one of the chickens in the hen house to the fox. Yes, so what's wrong with that? Well, that's the wrong person to refer to, it isn't it? It depends on what your background is. Well, do It depends on how much you're going to make, doesn't it? Uh, our whole society is built on, uh, if I may say so, as a cartoonist as well as a doctor, it's built on lies, it's built on hypocrisy, it's built on all the minor attributes of life. If the truth be known, folks, there'd be blood on the street. Well, the Read the newspapers. Fraud after fraud. People have fraudulent voices. They misuse the voice. That's why they can't talk, basically. It's not neurological. Do, don't you it think it's a, it's, a, it's a bit of a fraud when the medical profession is promoting the use of a drug that's one of the deadliest toxins in diluted form that is neither, it's neither safe, nor is it effective in treating spasmodic dysphonia, and yet they claim that's that, what it's you're saying that it's 99% it's effective. That's what you're saying it's not. I, I, I think the percentage is much less than 99%. I think it's, and I, you're the co-author of the book, Curing Hopeless Voices, on page 15, I, I just present a, a whole page of the uh, outcomes of Botox for spasmodic dysphonia, and it's not a pretty picture. But let me put it, this one out of 17 shots, according to David Barton. No, one of 17 of... He uh, reported no, he's about a it, Keith Frazier's... No, no. He's a president of a CEO uh, Fortune 500 company. One of 17 Botox shots from one of the top ear, nose, and throat doctors over four years. That's all he... Well, one of 17. One. one of 17, the first one. Okay. Now, now what, is that, what is that percentage? That's not 99%. No, that's not. Seven. No, no. That sounds that, more like... No. Peggy Aiken, That's who's a high it. official of the NSDA, uh, is That's like a, 5%. Yeah. But a little bit more yeah, than that. But Peggy Aiken, and she's a wonderful person. She works for the NSDA. She I thought she worked Botox. for Allergan. Well, she, she told yeah. me that Allergan is the one who pays the bills, the well, drug that's banker. interesting. Allergan funds the NSDA. But she tried 20 Botox shots and gave it up. And then we have another fellow by the name of uh, Keith Fraser, who wrote the, uh, the book The Voice Gallery in 2002. And at the end of the book, he said he had 20 Botox shots, yeah. and he gave it up. So what's so special or, or uh, wonderful about Botox for SD? The outcome of patients who had 45 Botox shots at the Mayo Clinic is nil over, se uh, over 15 years. The woman with her husband in the office, my office, said not one Botox shot for her SD ever worked. Now, who's telling the public what's going on? We wrote the book, and we re revealed what the heck is going on well, we with Botox. But now that this <laughs> studio is shutting down, mm -hmm. and that the publicly traded corporation is no longer going to fund the benefit mm -hmm. of public information to let people know, then the door is Let is them know there's the a choice. The door is they slamming They don't know. The medical shut. profession does not give the patient choice. They know the choice. Uh, gentlemen, th th he, this gentleman went public. Uh, he's interesting. Um, Ron Steger, that's his name, and he had, I think, four or five Botox shots. None took. Uh, he had uh, the diagnosis of spasmodic dysphonia at the Mayo Clinic. Uh, another ear, nose, and throat doctor gave him the shots, and the Mayo Clinic told him, look, you can do surgery, or you can try this doctor out on the West Coast. That was me. And he came to me. I got his voice back from a hopeless condition, neurologically caused, they say, and he's been cured for years. But here's the point of this whole madness. The patient doesn't get choice. Cable network allows the patient to know. Let's not say they're going to come and work with an all-natural approach. Patients do not believe there's a cure. Their doctors say there are no cures. It's on the medical websites. It's on the academic websites. Right. It's on the Allegan websites. They're all in uh, uh, well-intentioned, let's put it that way. But they are still in the dark ages on the cause. It's not neurological. Well, they're well-intentioned, but wouldn't you say that, it's, uh, that they're misguided? Yes, terribly misguided. I mean, the reality is but, that, that, that you get results for these people not because they have neurological conditions, mm -hmm. not because they have psychological conditions, not because... They get psychological they, conditions if they don't have a cure. or. A but you're not a psychotherapist or a, a psychoanalyst. A no. And no. you're not doing psychoanalysis no. with patients. It, it, you're doing direct voice rehabilitation. What you're which doing is, all natural. is you're 
you're rehabbing basically their faulty patterns of speaking. Wrong patterns of speech. They all talk from the lower throat. Yes. I put them up in the face. And th the voices that came out at the beginning of the show, folks, is the way patients with spastic or strangled voices talk. It's pathetic. In fact, they don't want to talk and they hide, they stay at home, they change their, their uh, jobs, they live lives of quiet desperation. Well, you know, in the case of Robert F. Kennedy Jr., they had ho hopes for him for high office. Mm -hmm. But he can't deliver a speech mm -hmm. without g tremendous, I huge amplification, first of all. If he tries to force his voice, his voice falls apart. But we live in an age of communication and the voice still is important. I, th I think you wrote a book change your voice, change your life. But the truth about voice is that it's about truth. Mm -hmm. It's about getting out the truth, the individual truth you of a human being. one minute to tell us about the truth. Okay. And we want to play, so we want to play uh, Pink Floyd. Yeah, put the uh, music back on. Let's yeah. hear. Underneath, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's the wall. It's yeah. a rock opera. We don't want no education. We don't want no education. And what's the second listen. line? Well, we'll listen. They don't need thought control. And that's what you've got in your field is yes. thought control. Right. They've told you, no matter George, George one person, that. one person who thinks differently, who sees differently, who observes with his own eyes, and they tell you you're wrong, no, what do you I tell them? I I have theories. And what do you tell them when they tell you you're wrong? When I tell them when I go to UC San Francisco, they don't listen. But you tell them you're off base, right? So what? You don't change your, you don't change your view. What's the, what's the name? Brought in your throat. Think about it, folks. I have a young man, Dr. John Curtis, on Ford Cooper. Thank you for joining me. these people and demand this Time Warner company. He said, you know, it's, a done, this. He said it's a done deal. There's not such thing as he's a done deal. He's a politician. He's, 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 he's positioning himself to run for mayor in another year. Right. That he's thinking ahead. Yes. Yes, so what's new? But that's selling himself out. So what's new? It's prostitution. So what's new? That's the worst thing he could do. So what's new? That's Rosendahl. That's do you remember Freud him? in the throat. Do you remember so. what his voice was like? Yes. Hi. 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 I can imitate him. Yes, hi. How you doing? <laughs> Sorry. That's <laughs> Rosendahl. I mean, and he was supposed to be like, you know, he prided himself on doing all these interviews with people. Uh -huh. You know, getting the word out. Well, well now they're a, cutting off a, the word here in the public access. There's a lot of uh, gamesmen out there.